by definition what this will do is the existing white money which is in the system which was being donated to political parties through the non anonymous fully declared route it will shift that to anonymous electoral bonds that's more of the scheme of the of the architecture of the electoral bond scheme itself because we are the only political party before your lordships and melods despite being a ruling party plus we have taken a principal stance not to melods accept any electoral bonds and we have not taken a single rupee of electoral bonds in the last 5 and a half years at uh, if i may say so melods at much cost to us melods i will there are three submissions melods i'll try to make very quickly plus first the report of the adr uh sir it says that your party has got some electoral bonds also no melods that's because they gave us this thing we have just given the detail because they asked the when the elect your lordship's order when uh the order was passed that every party has to disclose details so we would have just responded saying that we have not taken any electoral bonds there's no question of taking any this is a principle stance we have not taken it plus the first submission i have i intend to make plus three submissions uh because the first submission is that the architecture and effect of the electoral bond scheme is not to reduce black money but to reroute non anonymous banking channel funding to anonymous electoral bond please please repeat because the architecture and effect of the electoral bond scheme is not to reduce black money funding but to reroute the non anonymous banking channel plus that is the conventional banking channel available or to anonymous electoral bonds plus that's the first submission the second is that the legally ordained melods informational black hole which this creates the electoral bond scheme creates it's a legally directed information black hole goes against the concept of informed electorate under 191a read with melods article 326 of the constitution both so it goes against the principle which is constitutionally mandated of a informed electorate under article 191a read with article 326 and melods the third submission for your lordship's consideration is that it violates the right to conscience under article 25 of individual shareholders because they don't know where their money is what their money is being used for mr sibal try to make mr. that mr sibal also argued mr mr sibal argued but he didn't pitch it on right to conscience under 25 mr i'm specifically saying it violates right to conscience under article 25 actually the 191g right you can say mr also mr i i'll try to make it good mr i know it's not the usual argument to be made mr but i'll try and make it good mr on the first mr before i begin with those submissions mr just one aspect is this matter is essentially about two things mr democracy and disclosure mr those those are the two fundamentals mr in my respectful submission which guide the underlying issues which arise in this matter mr this matter is not about contribution limit except on that 7.5% issue or expenditure limit or expenditure timeline which is when can the comp- uh, when can the parties spend for election after election plus well, those are all aspects which are litigated not just in our jurisdiction but across the world plus well, this is about something which pervades all those aspects which is disclosure every aspect it pervades which is disclosure and disclosure not just to authorities well, there are two kinds of disclosures one is i should only disclose to the election commission that may not be sufficient this is about disclosure to the authorities and to the public at large and well, that is where the rights under 191a 326 come into play plus in so far as why this is relevant from a perspective of democracy plus the principle of one man one vote it's not just about that i cast my vote what is the substantive value of that vote plus it basically entitles me to claim equal representation to my representative equal influence over the democratic process and to show that my views have equal worth in the system this scheme melods possibly changes that by shifting the center of gravity from the elected public to somewhere else of the political discourse and influence without the public even getting to know about it melods with that melods i will enter melods the first submission which is the architecture melods what does this scheme do plus this scheme effectively is a alternative white money channel which the government has created there was a already a disclosure based channel the normal banking channel the rtgs the bank draft the check which was available but this is a new white money channel what they have added is anonymity to it by definition therefore 
it cannot be including money which would otherwise be black money. It can only deal with money which will anyways be white money, which a person can disclose as white money. Plus two, well, the, the function of whether a money is disclosed to a banking channel and there no, declared as white is not a function of what it will be eventually used for, whether to donate to a political party or something else. It's primarily a function, primarily, I don't say exclusively, primarily a function of two things. First, whether the money is legally obtained. If it's illegal money, I can't disclose it to a banking system normally, unless I'm uh, trying to launder the money. And second, if I'm trying to suppress my income, my income is X and I'm trying to show Y to save tax. Plus, this will not bring in any of that money which is anywhere in the black space, in the cash economy. So what does this do? By definition, what this will do is the existing white money which is in the system, which was being donated to political parties through the non-anonymous fully declared route, it will shift that to anonymous electoral bonds. That's more of the scheme of, this, of the architecture of the electoral bond scheme itself. And Malos, that is borne out by data as well. First, Malos, in terms of what is the cash usage in the economy? Because of course, cash usage, they can't be a perfect number that this is the cash usage in the electoral system. We all, all, always have to go by surrogates, some surrogate. So Malos, in that context, we look at, I'll compare the 2014 election commission recoveries of cash during election, the, the 2014 general election and 2019. The amounts of cash recovered in 2014 are, have gone up by three times in 2019, which by itself is indicative. If the commission is catching more money, that means there's more money in circulation. A large chunk of it will be belonging to political parties. To the extent that cash is used in the, econ in the elections, maybe this will show that. So Malaz, that's, that's a limited extent. I agree. I'm, I'm grateful to Malaz. We are not heard that. So Malaz, my point is that cash can only increase. Cash cannot be controlled by definition by this scheme. Malaz, this scheme, let's assume Malaz, that cash was tomorrow even banned, for instance, by political party. Cash can still be used by political party. That's a reality. Unless the cash economy itself ceases to exist. So this scheme, Malaz, because I am trying to meet the argument which is in support of the scheme by the union right since the beginning, including in their affidavits that we are trying to transfer what is there in the cash economy into this. My submission is that is just not possible given the nature of this scheme. In fact, it's not possible unless even if you bar uh, uh, prohibition, if you, even if you prohibit it, you possibly can't do it unless the cash economy itself ceases to operate, independent of political parties. So Malas, that is really a red herring argument is my submission for your Lordship's consideration. The argument of the other side on that is they are trying to experiment. If it is possible, they can do it. If they can wean away from the cash cash, so Malaz, we not really cut. Uh, so we can't. We can't say that this the attempt should not be made or experimentation should not. Be made. So Malaz, but what if it were to primarily impact the other side, which was already being disclosed? So what's happening now is you have two channels: anonymous cash channel and anonymous banking channel. So what the white and the black channel are anonymous now. My submission for lordship submission uh, consideration is this. There was earlier a black channel, the cash channel, which was there, which needn't be disclosed, etc. Now you have created an anonymous white channel. So uh -huh. both are anonymous. And this is at the cost of only one thing, which is disclosed white channel. Because I, I'll try to make that good. I'll try to even through data, I'll try to make that good because we have the benefit of five years of operation of this scheme. Because that's the benefit we have. So what's the impact of it? Parties which were getting 70 to 75 percent of their political disclose contributions from check bank RTGS, that's the disclose uh, white channels, are now getting 20 percent, 15 percent. The electoral anonymous scheme has taken over at the cost of white channels. So my submission by Lordship consideration is this. It's not to attack the black money. It's actually to attack the white disclose channel. And that's the actual impact as well of the scheme. And Malaz, I'll just place the data and then Malaz, I'll go to my next point. Malaz, what we have done, we did an exercise. What we have done, Malaz, at 29 seats, every party gives a contribution report uh, above 20,000. Above 20,000, they're required to. Malaz, we collated the last 10 years from 2013 onwards, all the reports. These are list of donors who came. That's right. So from each of the list, we have taken all the list of donors and it says against that, cap, for instance, it says check number, DD, etc. Correct? My laws will have the first cash entry in this one. Is that 5553? That's it, less than uh, 2000. No, it's more than 20,000. Plus, more than 20,000, you have to disclose whether cash or check. Either way, you have to disclose. That's the statutory requirement. 5553. Five? Five, 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 Look at 153, serial number 153 in that chart. Some Mr. VV, 1 lakh cash. So,
So, Malaz, what I have done, Malaz, each entry we have added up for two largest political parties for two years to get the numbers because there was no other way to do it. This is not information available in the public domain. This was the only way to do it. So, we have added up each of the entries to determine what is the check amount which they were getting as a percentage of their funding in 2013 14 and what they're getting post electoral bonds. And Malaz, the net result of that, Malaz, I prepared a chart for your Lordship's consideration. The learned quartmaster will kindly screen share that. That document which has been emailed. So, Malaz, my respectful submission is now the entire political funding substantially is anonymous because Black Channel continues. Malaz, at the cost, at the cost, if the Malaz, if the objective is to have some kind of disclosure, at the cost of disclosed white money, if you are increasing non-disclosed white money, Malaz, that's what the real Your Lordship will have this chart, page one. Uh, there is a little flaw because of the non uh, the uh, bearer bonds as such. Our bearer bonds that that's going to create that's creating a problem. That's all we have understood that argument. And I'm making the argument solely to meet the union's justification of the scheme, which is that it's meant to bring in black money into the white system. My respectful submission to meet that is it actually does the opposite. It takes away the non-anonymous white money and puts it in the anonymous kitty. That's my submission. That we already have. That's right. So Malaz, I am saying therefore to that extent. A, the justification is not valid and B, for that reason, it's arbitrary as well. It doesn't meet even the stated justification. Of argument for Malaz, because the determining principle, Malaz, one of the tests of arbitrariness your lordships have stated is it is absent a determining principle. Malaz, here the stated determining principle is contrary to what the scheme actually does and intends to do. What it basically according to you does is that it brings into the fold. Earlier, what, what you had uh, non-anonymized uh, white money. That's right. Now that is replaced increasingly by anonymized white money. And that's the real victim or target of this scheme, not the black money. That's my res respectful submission. Because black money will continue irrespective. That funding will keep on continuing. So now the two channels, both are anonymized, white and black. That's my respectful side. That's the scheme. That's the real picture which this scheme does to our political financing. That's what it does.